All right then guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing another finished knife that I just finished up today. Uh, this is just a core, because the uh, it's going to a customer, my first ever customer, and he ordered just the knife core, so just the steel, as he wants to put his own handle scales on it, as he's making a matching set with a slingshot, so he wants it to have the same handle material, which I think will look pretty cool. So, uh, so this is what we got. This is one of my five inch uh, skinning knives. It's one of the designs I do. Um, I enjoy doing this design, to be honest with you, it's quite fun. Um, so yeah, it's just a five inch skinning knife. Obviously I've heat treated the blade, drilled the holes, uh, shaped it all, cut it out with the angle grinder, put a nice edge on it, which I'll show you later. Let's go to the first customer, like I said. Uh, cut the pins as well for the customer here. Um, the two six mil brass pins. I roughed them up as well on the belt sander whilst uh, also chamfering them. So they fit nicely in the holes. I cut these at about 1.3 inches. So as I'd rather them be too big than too short. Um, so I'll show you they fit nicely. This is the front one. And then there's the back one. So they fit in there nicely, as you can see. Uh, so yeah, this is the finished knife. Let's go through a little bit more on it. Put the pins off to the side. So uh, I actually hand sanded this to 240 grit. I didn't really worry too much about hand sanding the back of here, because obviously it's going to get roughed up anyway. Uh, so that's why it looks a bit bad. But obviously it's going to get roughed up anyway with a rough grit of sandpaper before the scales are glued on. Because uh, obviously the epoxy will bond a bit better if it's roughed up. So I mainly focus my attention from about there to about there. Uh, so you, as you can see, my satin finish, 240 grit. Started right off with the 80 grit sandpaper to remove all the scale from the heat tree and the temper, which took hours. <laughs> but um, then I went to 120 grit to remove the one uh, to remove the 80 grit scratches, and then 240s is my final kind of polishing uh, grit to remove the 120 grit scratches and get them all going parallel to the tip, so they all run parallel to the tip. There's no uh, deep scratches at all; they all run parallel to the tip. Uh, I just do that by using. A old handle of G10 where the hole kind of went a bit wrong. There's just got some uh, leather attached to it. I just glued on uh, and I just wrap the sandpaper around the leather side and just start here and just do straight pulls. So instead of going back and forth when sanding, uh, I just start at one area, just pull to the tip. Obviously, be careful when you're going by the tip because you don't want to round this off. So you pull, get to about there and lift off. Back there, pull, get to about there, lift off. Uh, spine taken to 120 grit on the belt uh, sander. And under here as well, taking to 120 grit and the back of here just to remove the scale. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this come out. Feels really nice in the hand, this knife does. Uh, like I said, it's just one of my five inch uh, skinning models that I do. So uh, yeah, obviously I checked the customers over 18. I got a passport picture yesterday just to prove the customer's over 18, which he is, I can confirm. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'll show you a little sharpness test in a minute. But I hope you like this little knife, guys. Like I said, I didn't really focus here about removing the scratches because it's going to get scratched up anyway with a rough like an 80 grit sandpaper or something like that to rough it up so the epoxy bonds better. So it keeps getting me looking at that. It looks horrible, but that's why it's not like that on purpose. Like I said, I focus my attention from about there to about there. So that's what you can see. It's actually being sanded nicely. Uh, the edge bevel here is taken to a 400 grit uh, Trizac belt. So then I go to the 120 grit belt to hit the apex of the edge to get it nice and thin after I've used the 80 grit to establish my plunge lines and uh, get down to the normal center line that I've scribed with the two train track lines. Uh, so then I use the 120, like I said, to get the apex of the edge and to raise the burr as well. I raise the first burr with 120 grit, both sides, and then I go to a 400 grit Trizac belt to finish it off and do multiple passes to clean up the bevel, get it looking a bit nicer, like nice and shiny but also kind of hones that edge a little bit. And then after I've done that, remove that burr completely with the 400 grit belt. I then come inside and strop it on my leather strop uh, with the rough side, just using some auto sole uh, metal polishing compound. And uh, yeah, uh, that's the result we get. And I will show you uh, how sharp the edge came out. So yeah, stay tuned. All right then guys, so we've got the sharpness test of the new uh, core I've just finished up, going off to the first customer. Uh, so yeah, sharpness test on piece of paper. see lovely sharp edge like I always test as well um, consistency we start from here you can see it's consistently sharp it's not just one area that is sharper than the other it's the whole edge throughout um, so yeah really sharp edge very satisfying noise you can hear it's cleanly cutting 
And as always, I'm using minimal pressure, as I always do. I'm not forcing this knife through the paper. Uh, as you can see, I'm just gently gliding it. You see, I'm not using any pressure at all. So as you can see, I'm just going nice and gently. I'm not hogging the knife through the material at all, through the paper. I'm just gently letting it glide. So also, guys, I'd like to mention as well, um, like I said this is knife the first one going to the first ever customer. Um, Getting a, get a bit more uh, work coming for people as well. Uh, my grandpa's actually sourced another customer for me, one of my grandpa's friends. I'm not going to disclose any names, but one of my grandpa's friends is actually interested in one of my knives. Um, and like I said, he's over 18. I've already checked this. I've got a passport, uh, passport photo. I know he's over 18. Uh, so I'm going to be making another knife for him. Very similar to this one that I made for myself. Very similar to the hunting knife I made myself recently. I'll be doing a video soon showing you guys how this knife performed and talking about it whilst uh, skinning up a pigeon, no two pigeons, sorry, and a squirrel with my grampy when we were out hunting on Sunday. So I'll let you guys know how this knife performed and uh, what I overall thought, what I thought about it overall and what my grampy's thoughts were as well um, in another video coming up soon. But as you can see, I'm just get a piece of paper. My knife remained sharp um, after hitting bone, uh, chest bone of the two pigeons and also bone of the squirrels, so the legs, etc. The customer wants that knife but with a, an inch bigger. So that knife is six inches now with a three inch handle and a three inch blade. So the customer wants a four inch handle and a three inch blade, but I ended up drawing out a different design and going with a three and a half inch blade and a four inch handle. This one has red G10 handles. Uh, the customer wants a blue G10 handle with a blue sheath instead of a black sheath. Same style with the little uh, curve here that I did on the belt sander, but uh, just a blue sheath with a blue handle instead of red and black. So yeah, getting a bit more customer work coming in, which is good. If any of you guys are interested in any of my knives or you want to buy one yourself, like I said, just drop me a comment down below and we can discuss something, obviously. Um, or hit me up on my Instagram, just Corey Jenkins Outdoors. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed.